here with me on set, Latasha Brown. She's co-founder of Black Voters Matter Fund. Um, I guess the first question is to you, Latasha, is this going to work? You know, I hope not. But I, what I will say is currently right now in Gwinnett County, on Monday, Georgia, the, Gwinnett, County, Georgia. Gwinnett, Gwinnett County, Georgia, uh, there are 37,000 voters because of SB 202, which was actually um, endorsed and part of the scheme of Governor Brian Kemp and also supported by the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. Brad Raffensperger, that 37,000 voters, any elector can actually bring a challenge to electors just to say, I don't think they're valid voters. And so there's w Vote Georgia, this right wing group that has connections to Trump has challenged 37,000 votes in the most diverse county in Georgia. They've already actually on September the 21st, there was a, a, a first meeting and they already have thrown out 15 to 20,000 votes. Thrown out 15 to 20,000? They've already thrown out 15 to 20,000. What can those 20, people 000. do? Because, no, 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 they haven't thrown them out. Okay, they've okay. thrown the challenges out. Thrown out the challenges. They've thrown it, okay. out the challenges, okay. right? Uh, which is good news, but it does create a lot of, re that's a lot of resources and time that you have, the election board has to actually go through, yeah. right? And it's almost, in some ways, instead of prepare for an election, which starting Monday, there's a week, right, before you start seeing them drop in ballots, and then we're just weeks away from, um, early, from early voting. Yeah. So here it is, resources that should be prepared for an election, now it is with these bogus challenges. We're hoping that on Monday, that this meeting on Monday, the rest of these challenges will be thrown out. Even the, the vote Georgia itself, 6,000 of those votes, they had to pull back saying, okay, they were duplicative of other votes other challenges that are, that actually just show that those challenges weren't valid. So it's really like to wear out. It's like that's 5,000 cuts. Let's just keep wearing it out yeah. and wearing the process out. Yeah, and you know, Ryan Kemp has been at this for a really long that's time. Right. Um, and uh, just to put this in context, in Detroit, in 2016, you know what happened there. There were 75,000 right. votes that were thrown out. Um, and had those votes been counted, Hillary Clinton could have legitimately carried the state of Michigan and been the president. So these little incidents matter Absolutely. greatly. They cast a dark shadow. Um, I want to bring you into the conversation, Rochelle. Uh, first of all, you'd be a historic uh, election. You'd be um, the first Latina uh, Texas attorney general if you're elected. They're trying these same voter suppression tactics in Texas. Uh, what are resources for people in Texas who are squaring off with the Republican administration there trying to disenfranchise the vote? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. Um, you know, we are a hotbed for extremism in the state of Texas, and we have the chief election denier in Ken Paxton. He not only tried to challenge the 2020 election using the power of his office, he may lose his license as a result of it. Um, re very recently, he has been targeting black and brown voters with the voter integrity unit that he has, and it's really a means of suppressing the vote. And if, if that weren't terrible enough. The fact that I am in very close margins with him, two points, three points, he issued a letter to elections officers across the state of Texas telling them to break the law, that they should make ballots available to some of these extremist groups, to whoever asked for them 24 hours after an election, which is against state and federal law. So this election cycle is incredibly important in Texas. And the fact that we are so close to unseating someone like that that will engage in voter suppression tactics is, is, is an incredible opportunity that Democrats have. Yeah, and you know, it's really scary, actually, because uh, there is already around a dozen um, election-denying Republican candidates that have secured their party's nomination for Secretary of State this fall. Ken Paxton is certainly one of them. And Latasha, I will say, uh, this is why when uh, the state of Georgia was, you know, essentially squaring off with Trump and people were hailing Brad Raffensperger as a hero, he ain't no hero. He's not a hero. He <laughs> is a practitioner of voter suppression Absolutely. like so many other people, and it's very important that we uh, remind people about that. Um, what are the resources, though, in Georgia? Like, if people are finding that their um, votes are being challenged, do people even get notified? That you know, I think that what, what people need to do is make sure that they're finding Fair Fight is doing an amazing job at literally being able to support people who actually find themselves in this situation. So I think they should reach out to them. Also, the Lord's Committee on Civil Rights mm -hmm. has been on the front forefront. And organizations such as ours, Black Voters Matter and other organizations that are in the area we can act, that are doing this kind of work help. And I think what we have to really recognize is I often say it over and over again, I'll continue 
this ad. There's always been three strategies. It's about restricting access to the ballot. It's been about creating this culture of fear. And it's about weaponizing administrative process. And that's what we're seeing right now, where the, the administrative process has been weaponized. So now a, an elector can actually just bring challenges to thousands of electors that take resources and time and energy away from the office that should be making sure that you're preparing for the uh, upcoming election. Yeah. And I, I think it's important, to Rochelle, too, for you to let the folks in Texas know um, what they can do to protect their vote. If they find that their votes are being challenged or if they are confronted uh, with something that seems nefarious to them, what should people do? I mean, first, people should make sure that they are registered to vote. We, we've seen some voter suppression tactics that just pull people off the voter registration rolls with a letter that is not even sent by certified mail. We saw 2,400 people pulled off that way, mostly Latinos who had become citizens at some point, even though they were eligible voters and had been voting for a long period of time. So make sure that you are registered to vote, have a plan to vote, and, and if you come up with any any difficulties. There are resources across the state. There is a voter protection program that is being run by organizations like Texas Civil Rights Project to make sure that that we are keeping an eye on these suppression tactics, um, you know, because it, it doesn't just impact the day of voting, but it also is impacting uh, mail-in voting. Yeah, we've been seeing we've been seeing uh, ballots uh, requests for ballots even being rejected. So yeah. making sure that you're on top of that and 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 connecting with those resources that we've got is the best way to make sure you can vote. And you know, it's almost a, an issue of uh, right-wing extremists in the Republican Party shooting themselves in their foot because a lot of their voters uh, are older and use mail-in ballots. Um, so we'll see how this all plays out. Latasha Brown will certainly be back on the show many times, but also later in the hour. And thank you so much, uh, Rochelle Garza, for being here, and good luck on your race. Uh,